Hi guys. Welcome to Education Leaves. Talking is an integral part of our life. We talk to our friends, family members, co-worker, and with strangers. But do we really communicate? Let's see how communication is different from talking. Talking refers to speaking words and sentences. Sometimes the message was clearly understood, sometimes not. But communication is sharing information between two or more people to reach a common understanding. Before you start communicating with others, make sure your message is clear and easy to understand. Here are some examples. So, Mr. John, tell me how you found about our company and this position we need to fill. Actually, I found it while I was sitting in the toilet and browsing the internet with my smartphone. Mr. John, you can leave now. Happy journey. Hey, dude, why haven't you answered my email? Your message was so poorly written that I didn't dare to start a dialogue. Maybe I should talk with your boss. Maybe you should email him. From these two examples, you can clearly see how poor communication affects our life and career also. Now, let's discuss some important characteristics of communication. 1. Communication involves a minimum of two persons, the sender and the receiver. 2. It is basically a two-way process, and it is incomplete until the message has been understood by the receiver in the same sense. 3. The forms of communication are order, report, instruction, queries, etc. 4. It is influenced by the mood of thinking of both the sender and the receiver. 5. The main objectives of communication are to build interpersonal relationships and enhance human behavior. 6. Communication is a circular process that starts and ends with the sender. Now let's discuss the process of communication. As we learned before that communication is a cyclic process that starts with the sender and ends with the sender in the form of feedback. It consists of some steps where each step constitutes the essence of effective communication. 1. Sender. The sender is the initiator of the message that needs to be transmitted. After having created the information, idea, etc., the sender encodes it in such a manner that can be easy to understand by the receiver. 2. Message. The message is the main subject of communication. It is also called the heart of communication. A message contains a thought, idea, picture, symbol, report, or order to gestures and posts serial uses. A message can be verbal or non-verbal. 3. Encoding. Putting the targeted message into an appropriate medium is called encoding. Encoding is very important because a wrong or inappropriate encoding may change the true intent of the communication. 4. Channel. It refers to the mode the message flows or is transmitted through. The message is transmitted over a channel that links the receiver with the sender. The message may be written or oral, and it can be transmitted through a computer, a cell phone, telephone, television, or a memorandum. 5. Receiver. The receiver is the person, group, or community for who the message is meant. As the sender, The receiver is also an important factor in the communication process as it is the other end of the process. The receiver should be in a fit condition when receiving the message because any negligence on the behalf of the receiver may make the communication useless. 6. Decoding. Generally, it means comprehending the message. After receiving the message, the receiver interprets it and tries to understand it in the best possible manner. 7. Feedback. It is the response of the receiver to get the message sent by the sender. Feedback is necessary to ensure that the message has been successfully encoded, sent, and decoded. Now let's discuss the types. First, verbal communication. It is the most general type of communication that involves the use of language and words to convey a message. Verbal communication can be subdivided again into four categories. 1. Intrapersonal communication. 
Intrapersonal communication is the communication within us through self-analysis, self-thinking, reflection, solo talking, self-awareness, assessment, etc. 2. Interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication takes place directly between two individuals, using or not using any technological device. It includes face-to-face -face conversation, online modes of communication, telephonic conversation, and so on. 3. Oral Communication The communication that employs spoken words, voice, and sound to share messages is called oral communication. This type of communication uses only one channel, that is sound, to transfer information. 4. Public Communication In this type of communication, one sender sends a message to a mass of people or an audience, face-to-face -face or using technological devices such as radio, television, etc. The chances of receiving verbal feedback are limited in public communication. Here are some examples of verbal communication. Face-to-face -face conversation. Giving a speech. Telephonic conversation. Sending voice note. Taking interviews. Group discussion in the workplace. Now let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of verbal communication. Advantages. 1. It saves a lot of time, money, and energy. 2. There are fewer chances of confusion because of the clarity of the method. 3. The information conveyed in verbal communication is easy to understand, as the doubts are cleared immediately. 4. Feedback is got quickly once a message is delivered. 5. It is a very reliable form of communication and thus people prefer it worldwide over other types of communication. Disadvantages 1. If the receiver is unaware of the sender's language, then communication cannot be carried out. 2. This form of communication is not at all suitable for a lengthy message. 3. While conveying messages orally, several irrelevant and unnecessary information may get included. 4. In verbal communication, there is no place for rectification or correction once a message is sent. Second. Non-verbal communication. It is a passive form of communication where information, thoughts, and feelings are conveyed through gestures, body language, tone of voice, facial expressions, signals, and symbols. Non-verbal communication is subdivided mainly into three different types. 1. Kinesics or body movements. Interpreting non-verbal behavior associated with any part of our body or the whole body, such as facial expressions, hand gestures, nodding of the head, etc. 2. Paralanguage. It includes non-verbal elements of communication such as pitch and intonation of the voice, rate of speech, and stress on words to impart the meaning of the information and the related emotion. The same message can convey different meanings according to the difference in the tone and pitch of the voice. 3. Haptics. Interacting or exchanging information through the sense of touch is known as haptics. It is very impactful and can convey the feelings and intentions of a person. For example, handshakes give a sign of a positive attitude and confidence while hugging gives a friendly and warm feeling. Here are some examples of non-verbal communication. Nodding head in approval. Showing a thumbs up sign to express positive feelings smiling at someone a confident handshake as a welcoming gesture giving a hug to show affection to talk in a raised voice while in anger now let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of non-verbal communication advantages one it complements verbal communication by adding clues and additional information for a better understanding of the message two the use of gestures, facial expressions, and signs makes the presentation very easy. 3. Usage of gestures, signs, and facial expressions, touch, etc. help illiterate people communicate properly. 4. The physically impaired people can communicate successfully by using signs, touches, and sounds. Disadvantages 1. Many people find non-verbal communication to be unreliable because of its lack of precision. 2. 
Many people find it difficult to understand nonverbal elements. 3. Long conversations cannot be possible using kinesics, proxemics, signs, and symbols as lengthy explanations and discussions cannot be done. 4. Lack of formality as like written and oral communications. 3rd. Written communication. The act of transferring and exchanging information through written letters, symbols, and words is called written communication. It is the most common and effective form of business communication. Let's have a look at some examples of written communication. Letters and applications, emails, memos and reports. Bulletins and advertisements, brochures, handbills, and leaflets, instant online messages, forms and questionnaires. Now let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of written communication. Advantages 1. The written documents can be recorded and stored permanently as proofs and evidence for future reference. 2. Written documents are most likely to be accurate, as there is a wide scope of repeated checking. 3. Long messages can be conveyed very easily through written communication. 4. The written form of information is accepted widely. 5. The availability of more time enables the sender to employ creativity in their writing. Disadvantages 1. Compared to speaking, writing takes a lot of time. 2. Illiterate people can neither read nor write. So, written communication is totally fruitless for them. 3. A written form of communication cannot display facial expressions, sentiments, emotions, and tone of voice. This may cause miscommunication. 4. Unlike verbal communication, written communication lacks immediate feedback. 4. Visual communication. A picture is worth a thousand words. The act of transmitting information using visual elements, such as drawings, signs, topography, colors, shapes, graphic design, illustration, animation, etc., is known as visual communication. Examples of visual communication. Advertisements, PowerPoint presentations, posters, charts and graphs, roadmaps, visual reports, manuals. Now let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages of visual communication. Advantages. 1. In the case of some complex information, such as statistics, Conveying through pictures is much easier and faster than verbal or written explanations. 2. Visual communication is much more flexible as it has the power to break all the cultural, geographical, ethnic, and language barriers. 3. Pictures and signs make more sense to the illiterate receivers. 4. It saves a lot of time as encoding and decoding happen quickly. 5. Visual elements grab attention instantly and generate interest among the audience. Disadvantages 1. The entire process of visual communication becomes quite expensive. 2. There is a chance that the receiver may even misjudge the prime significance of the message conveyed. 3. The process behind the images and then their preparation takes a lot of time. It also requires the implementation of creativity which again is time-consuming. 4. The images or graphics are not sufficient to convey a compelling message if not backed by oral or written information. 5. Listening communication. The ability to receive sounds and information attentively and accurately in a communication process and also interpret the same is called listening. We can say that listening is the key to any effective communication. Here are some examples of listening communication. Face-to-face -face conversation, noting down class lectures, listening to the news on the radio, demonstrating concern, using brief affirmations to messages, paraphrasing to show understanding. Now, let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of listening communication. Advantages 1. There is less chance of missing information with active listening. 2. Careful listening provides better understanding, hence, offering an opportunity to avoid confusion, misunderstanding, and potential conflict. 3. Active listening to others creates connection, respect, and goodwill in the relationship. 4. It provides a better understanding of our surroundings and other people.
Disadvantages 1. It consumes a lot of time and energy. 2. It needs greater effort. 3. Weak listeners may interrupt the speaker quite often. This disruption of speech is a major drawback to listening communication. 4. All people are not good at listening. So they cannot get a clear picture through listening. Usually, employees spend 30% of their time on emails, meetings, presentations, conference calls, reporting, and several other activities at the workplace that involve communicating with colleagues and superiors. In this field, you have to be sure that your communication is the most efficient and engaging. It will increase your productivity at work. For this, follow the seven C's of effective communication. That is, clear, correct, complete, concise, concrete, coherent, and courteous. Now let's discuss the seven C's in details. First, clear. It should be effortless for the receiver to understand your message. Any message needs to come out clearly from your communication. This will consume your time wasted on emails. Don't communicate so many things in one message, because it will dilute the attention of the reader or the receiver. Second, correct. When you write too many emails in a day, it increases the chances of spelling mistakes in your messages. Sometimes spell checker cannot find out your mistakes. You need to be sure that you address people in the right manner and their names correctly. You also need to make sure that the viewer or reader of your messages has sufficient knowledge and skill to understand the technical terms that you use in your message. Third, complete. For effective communication, provide a complete message. It will help the reader understand and take action. Incomplete messages lead to a lot of back and forths, iterations, and a waste of time and effort for both ends. If you want the reader to take action immediately, ensure that you have a call to action in your mail or any other type of message, and also communicate the urgency of the task in question. Fourth, concise. You should not write four sentences in a message when you can finish the message in just two sentences. It will waste the time of both the sender and receiver and decrease their productivity too. You shouldn't add fillers such as, basically, sort of, I mean, actually, etc. Remember, your message needs to be accurate, crisp, and to the point. Fifth, concrete. You need to accept what you want to convey to the audience. Concreteness is an important quality of communication that needs to come to the fore, especially during the marketing or advertising campaigns. Your confidence should capture the attention of the audience and, of course, not bore them. 6. Coherent. Your message should have proper logic. All sentences in your mail or report should be connected to the previous one and also stick to the main topic. Without coherence, the reader must lose track easily of what you have conveyed. And 7th C of the communication is courteous. Being courteous is of serious importance in a corporate setting. Individuals who work together are not friends and therefore, to maintain a healthy working relationship, you need to be courteous. Insulting and aggressive tones will cause trouble among individuals and result in reduced productivity. In this video, I am going to discuss the barriers to communication. A person wants to communicate one thing at a time, but he communicates something else that he never wanted. This type of behavior in communication is called the arc of distortion. Distortion could happen due to some defect in the mechanism of communication. These obstacles in communication are known as barriers to communication. Now let's discuss some barriers. 1. Psychological barriers. There are many types of psychological and mental problems that may affect our communication. Some people have stage fear, phobia, depression, speech disorder, etc. These conditions are hard to manage sometimes, and will most certainly limit the ease of our communication. 2. Linguistic Barriers The language barrier is one of the main barriers that limit effective communication. The most commonly employed tool of communication is language and the fact is, every major region has its own language. 
That's why it is difficult for maximum people to communicate with people from different regions. 3. Physical Barriers Physical barriers are the most obvious barriers to effective communication. Some of the physical barriers are noise, closed door, faulty equipment used in the communication process, etc. Most of these barriers can be removed. 4. Emotional Barriers An absolute mixture of emotions and facts is necessary for effective communication. Some emotions like anger, frustration, and humor, which are imperfect according to the situation, can blur the decision-making capabilities of a person and limit the effectiveness of their communication. A person who is mature emotionally will be able to communicate effectively. On the other hand, people with less mature emotionally will face various difficulties when they communicate with others. 5. Cultural Barriers Due to globalization, any large organization has people from several parts of the world with different cultures. Religion, dressing sense, drinks, food, pets, and behavior will change drastically from one culture to another. Sometimes it is hard to communicate with each other in such situations. 6. Attitude Barriers Some people are introverted and they like to be left alone. Others like to be social or sometimes extra clingy. Both of these cases could be a barrier to communication. Some people also have some attitude issues like huge ego and inconsiderable behavior. This type of attitude could be the cause of demotion in organizational positions. However, sometimes problems like selfishness and egocentric behavior cannot be correctable. 7. Physiological Barriers some physiological limitations like certain disorders or diseases or other could also prevent effective communication between the various channels of an organization. Some example of physiological barriers to effective communication is shrillness of voice, dyslexia, etc. These are not crucial and can be easily removed. 8. Technological Barriers Technology is developing fast, and as a result, it is difficult to adapt to new technologies. In business, organizations encounter several technological barriers in communication. Some are obvious like poor internet or obsolete hardware. Technological barriers of communication can hamper the business if not addressed on time. A technological barrier can be overcome if the right training is given. Now let's discuss how we can overcome the barriers to communication. 1. Checking whether it is a good time and place to communicate with the person. 2. Being clear and using language that the person understands. 3. Communicating one thing at a time. 4. Respecting a person's desire to not communicate. 5. Checking that the person has understood you correctly. 6. Communicating in a location that is free of distractions. 7. Acknowledging any emotional responses the person has to what you have said. In this video, I am going to discuss the importance of effective communication. Communication enables a group of people to think and act together. Without communication, there will be no organization. Poor communication leads to poor coordination and similarly, cooperation depends on communication. Now let's discuss some importance of communication. 1. Connection. Connection is the most important factor between the sender and receiver. Without connection, no one can build any relationship with others. And most importantly, communication helps one to connect with others. 2. The basis of coordination. The manager explains the private goals, achievement, interpersonal relationships, and organizational goals to the employees. This provides coordination between departments and employees. Here, communication acts as a basis for coordination. 3. Fluent Working A manager coordinates an organization's physical elements and humans to run it efficiently. This coordination is impossible without proper communication. 4. Increase in Size to handle a large scale of operation in a business firm, effective communication has been largely felt. 
5. Growing Specialization An increase in departments has headed to the requirement of specialization inside the organization. Sound communication is essential for ensuring mutual understanding between different departments for the smooth functioning of the organization. 6. Competition Due to globalization and liberalization, intense competition has resulted between public, private, and foreign banks. Now communicating through the newspaper, mass media, social media, advertisements, etc. has become the most important survival factor in the rat race. 7. Decision Making Proper communication provides information that is necessary for decision making for the managers. The decision shouldn't be taken in the absence of information. So, communication is the basis for making the correct decisions. 8. Trade Union Movement Basically, trade unions are very powerful and strong. Consulting and regular exchange of information helps to maintain a healthy relationship between them. In this case, communication is considered the most necessary factor. 9. Human Relations To develop confidence and mutual trust, it is important for both employees and management to communicate with each other. In the management process, the participation of employees has bought in a sense of belonging and loyalty toward the organization. 10. Public Relations Every organization wants to keep its stakeholders, government, customers and the other section of society informed about its products and contribution to society. It helps to build goodwill for the organization. 11. Personal Good communication skills are required for every successful job. The ability to communicate in an effective manner is equally important for promotion in a career. A manager should be a good public speaker and every employee should have the proper sense of communication to maintain their interpersonal relationships. This is why communication is so important in every field and every moment in our life. 12. Interpersonal Relationships Communication is the key to sharing a good relationship with your family members. Through communication, family members share their sorrow, happiness, thoughts and stories. It helps you to share a good relationship with your family. Neglecting communication causes uncomfortable relationships with close members of your family. If you think this video is helpful to you, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.